All right, we are recording. Need to get a drink of water. One thing I saw that was very good is that the heart rate monitor did not die on me, so it was it needed battery. I forgot to start the music going again. Um, and I do want to finish off the point I was trying to get to with the uh, when I ended the previous video concerning the idea of teaching programming in uh, K-12 in that range, although it was speaking specifically in high school, it's like, okay. The idea that you would be teaching this because then, oh, it can be applied, and this was part of the argument made that I saw, it can be applied, it can help you with other things in school, which in, we can leave it at that generic. The thing I saw, it did get kind of specific, it's like, okay, these are stupid examples, these are bad examples, because that ain't happening. Let me just tell you, those examples, no, that's not, no. Uh -huh. But, uh -huh. the more generic idea of learning to program helping you in, in class. Yes, that is true. That, like, knowing how to use R, as I do now, would have been helpful for me in, well, not so much math class, but more the physics, physics classes that I took. Would have been helpful there. Uh, in college, probably also some in high school, I don't remember some high school stuff quite as well. But, here's the thing, it wouldn't help at high school level. It's like, the idea that this is teaching logical and critical thought, yeah, learning to, to program can do that, yes. But you'd be wanting to teach that at a much younger age than high school. So... Your point about saying we should teach in high school for these reasons doesn't follow me. Additionally, but then it's like, okay, well, teach it younger. It's like, well, how much younger? And also, how are you teaching? What are you teaching? Because like in the previous part, I talked about how I hate Python. I think it's a lousy link for several reasons. And I went off about the whole, it doesn't know how to work with lists properly. Do you teach that? Do you instead teach something like C? Which C is a wonderful, which is my understanding for it. And it's also something that if you know, if you're competent with C, you can get a job at a lot of places. Um, like one thing that I've seen, it's been a while since I've seen it, but it's an interesting commentary concerning C, which is that, because you use it in uh, working with game engine. Which makes sense, because one of the strengths of C is its ability to work with basically any hardware. So, that that's very helpful, being able to interface with basically any GPU kind of thing. Um, I think that's clean, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna mop the... I'm gonna clean the mop. Um, but it's also... The thing where it gets funny is that, like, software for banks, they, they need people that can program in C as well. The problem is, the games industry keeps getting those people because it's the seemingly more prestigious job. So, the banks, well, you'd be making a solid paycheck. You'd be making, a, you know, good money then. I'm not saying that because it's a bank. I'm saying because they need the people and also because it would say, no, 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 you can have this job for 20 years. Well, maybe not that long, but it's like full career at that company. That's not what you would find in the games industry. And this, it's just how the industry is that you will see developers, in, depending, move from one to another. Like, oh, the project is done here, okay, well, I'm not being hired somewhere else. It's kind of like what you see in Hollywood with actors and other, other roles as well, where it's, you work for as long as that project is there, and then once that project is done, you move on to the next project. But there's always enough projects that you're not necessarily in fear of being without work. You can be, but it doesn't it doesn't have to happen that way. So, like, whenever you see, uh, like, the game just released, and then it's like, oh, there were massive layoffs there, so clearly the game wasn't, you know, hasn't sold as well. It's like, no, they're letting go of the people that they don't need anymore because 
it takes fewer people to maintain a game than it does to make it. And that's just how the industry is. It's not a sign of failure, it's a sign that that's how the industry works. Not so if you're programming software for a bank. So do you teach C so that they can get those jobs? Do you not? Like for me, my experience, R is what I'd want to know, not Python. Because that's, you know, for the working with statistics and math and such is great. What the why would I want that? Why would I want an alien embryo? Um, so yeah, it just, you know, what is it then that you want to keep becomes a question. So the idea that, oh, it's just going to help with classes. Not everything will. Not everything will. It can also then be the question of how do you teach it? Because, um, like in physics, I, I could see you teaching how to work with R for your specific lab, for your, for your specific lab. That's basically how I taught myself. But do you do it that way and make that part of the, the experiments work? Or do you actually have a class that teaches it where it's more an abstract teaching than actual use the work, get it done kind of teaching? Use what you need to do, and a tool to do it with, do it. To do it that way. Either way, though, you're taking time away from other things. Some would say, oh no, it doesn't necessarily have to be. No, it is taking time away from other things. Alright, there's a limited amount of time, so even if it is integrated into teaching a, uh, doing a lab in a physics, physics class like I described, even if it's integrated into that, that is still time the additional time being spent on that lab than on other labs. So, no, it, it's, that argument is false. That it, it won't take additional time. It will. Um, crap, what was it? There was another point about it that I wanted to make, and I don't know. But yeah, it's just... I get the idea... And to a degree, and in a certain way, I would like that, but it's... Oh, I didn't know it's in song. I would like to see stuff talk, but it's just... It's also not everyone is going to benefit from it. Oh, yeah, there were also stupid arguments about... Um, like, you know, you can't appreciate the internet if you don't understand how to code. It's like, sure you can. There are people that love to drive. Couldn't tell you how a, an engine works. I guess what? That's the reality of it. You don't need to understand the intricacies of the internet to take advantage of. And it's also like uh, one thing that I kind of pride myself on with the writing that I do, it, you know, like the books and such that I will write, is that. Um, is that because I taught myself LaTeX, I can also do the formatting and such, which normally would today would be somebody else doing that work. And they might also be doing it in something like just Word. It's like they might not, I, mean, I, I would hope not at an actual publisher, that they would use the proper software. They might not use LaTeX, but they may use something else. But it still is a, I'm, I'm able to do that. What most writers today probably never experienced, never worked with something like that. They had no, no knowledge of how to do the typesetting and stuff. And I'm not saying I'm all that good at it or very advanced with it, but it's I can and have and will when I write a story. I can basically put together and design the entire book for it. any art in it, which I don't need art in it, but how the page numbers are placed, the chapter numbers, the names, the name of the book, all that I do. And that does give me a greater appreciation in some ways, but at the same time, 
there are plenty of authors, better authors than me, very respected authors, that they don't have any sense of that. Does that mean that they don't appreciate their, their craft because they don't have these skills? No! That's ridiculous and insulting to a degree that, oh, you need to have this kind of understanding to truly appreciate it. It's like, he's an award-winning author or she's an award-winning author. What the hell are you talking about? But also I mentioned back there were specific examples given. Where like in a biology class, you know, with programming you could do the, uh, you could uh, break, break down the genome of something. It's like, uh, no. That kind of programming is way more advanced than you would ever teach in high school. You may have software that will do it, but that would be software that doesn't require any level of coding. Because guess what? A lot of, there are plenty of developers out there that their job is to make software that you never have to see the coding for. Another example was like modeling physical bodies in, for physics. Like the motion of planets. It's like, okay, again, this is something that no, you are not going to learn to do competently in a high school. For one thing, the triple body problem is non-trivial. There is no arc, there is no general solution to it. This is something that people with PhDs study and can't figure out a general formula for. High school kids are not going to figure it out. You're not going to even teach them to model celestial bodies correctly. Yeah. Just because, oh, it's programming. how to do certain things with programming. Some love it. They, they are gifted at this stuff. They may not choose to turn into a career, which is fine. Their, their interest can be elsewhere, but they definitely have skills there and enjoy Great. Enable them to, to explore that. But then there are those, and I didn't that in some cases, it's like, nope, no skills at all. They have no interest in it either. Okay, don't force it on them. Let them just enjoy what they have. Which could be skills, um, drafting, for example. Actually, yeah, that, that would be a good, good example for the points I'm trying to make. Like, it could be somebody who likes drafting and doing CAD work, computer assisted drawing. It's like, they don't need to learn to code for that. Some of it, they, it might help. They don't need to know it. But they would be great at it. But they could be great working with that software. They don't even know one bit about how that software works. It may help in some circumstances. But they don't need that. So why are you saying that, oh, we should teach it to, we should teach them the code so they can appreciate it. They're going to appreciate it without that. I can appreciate technology more by understanding it but I don't appreciate it less when I don't know that. It's like, I am one of those people that also, like, when seeing a magician do his tricks, I see what they're doing. I, I will figure out how that trick works. And for me, that makes it, that allows me to appreciate it more. It's not like it ruins the magic, but that's me. Not everyone is like that. I actually do remember one time, it wasn't a magic act, but it was a juggling act that uh, involved some of the people being on unicycle. And I noticed something in it, it's like, oh yeah, they're doing that because it makes it so much easier. I mentioned it to a friend, she's like, you're ruining this. It's like, all I noticed was that if you actually watched, yes, they were on a unicycle and they were rocking it back and forth to stay steady on it. But you notice they were in a perfectly straight line with the person they were juggling with the stuff with because it was going back and forth between two people. They were staying in that line because they kept it easy. It's like, it, it really was not that complicated for what they were doing. 
I mean, once you get comfortable on that unicycle, I would not be surprised if it's like, no, it, what we're doing there, I could be standing still. It would be the exact same. It doesn't mess with me at all. And it's like, I could, I picked up on that. I didn't do that. A lot of people can't. And nothing wrong with that. What else is stuff that we talk about? I'm sure there's plenty. Can't really talk about the sport. They don't have an appreciation there. And I gotta get more water. We do have an appreciation for sports, but it's like. I used to be able to watch a baseball game. I don't really know if I can now. Like, not the whole game, it just... It's not always that interesting. Um, I do enjoy watching football. Like, even when my team, the Packers, aren't in the Super Bowl, I will still watch the Super Bowl because it's... I, I can appreciate... I, I enjoy watching it as entertainment. There are definitely people that are way more into it. Like, I couldn't tell you one play from another. I really couldn't. I still enjoy it. But it also means I can't object quarterback. Which maybe some people appreciate. Um, I'm afraid for Fury though that I will do. Because it's like... But it's also... It's so hard to do that now. They keep changing the rules. Because, like, one thing I remember... It used to be years ago for... Uh, defensive pass interference. But that was offensive pass interference, by the way. Um... But that there was one uh, thing that, you know, like one check related to it, which is that if the defensive player you know, turns around to see where the ball is, that then it's not necessarily interference. Where the idea being that if they have turned so that they are making of themselves a possible receiver, and then they interfere with the intended receiver's the offensive receiver's ability to catch it because they're trying to catch it themselves, that is not interference. It's like that is the person was actively trying to intercept it. So, no, it's not interference, it is them doing this. Whereas, didn't get watched. There we go. Um, whereas, uh, if all they do is watch the intended receiver and then like throw their arms up to try to block them from being able to receive it, but they have no knowledge where the ball is, they're just playing off the receiver. That's interference, because now you don't actually know what's going on, you're just trying to react to them. That made some sense to me. It's like, well, no, you're not, because it's like, well, you're not playing to try to catch the ball, you're just trying to ruin their attempt at making a play. And I get that, as that makes sense as interference. But today, there's so many other quirks to it that's like, I have no idea what's going on. And that, that, yeah. That does make it not so much fun. It's also weird how basically the rules don't have to have an understanding for or recognition for physics. It's like a quarterback can release the ball, and if you were basically in the air leaping at the quarterback to try to stop them, but they already released it when you hit them, that can be a, a, a flag that of uh, unsportsman like conduct or roughing the pass or whatever. It's like n no, that that's called momentum. It's something you can't change easily when you have no ability to apply a f any momentum to apply a force in a different direction, which is the case when you were in the air. It's also the case when you are 300 pounds and running. Not that easy to suddenly change direction then. But nope, doesn't matter. See, that kind of stuff with football I can talk about. That kind of stuff with sports. In general, sometimes I can talk about it. It depends on what the sport is. I don't really know the rules for a lot. Oh. But yeah, it, it, so I can't really talk about the sport. I can talk about video games. Um, but I don't really know what game 
स्टॉक पैक वन थिंग आई सॉ एंड इट इज इंटरेस्टिंग सी पीपल ट्राई टू डू स्टडीज ट्राई डू एनालिस ऑफ वाई इज ई स्पोर्ट्स सो बिग एंड वाई आई वन आइडिया दैट आई थिंक मेक्स लास्ट सेंस and there was one thing that i saw talking about with like oh yeah that kind of aligns with what my guess would be which is a part of the reason why it is so popular in my opinion is that it's approachable anyone not everyone can be a football player not everyone can be a baseball player everyone can play league of legends if they want to you know i actually have to take it back because it would be some physical handicaps that would not be able to but it, it it's still a much more accessible sport much more accessible game than other sports are then baseball then football hockey wrestling um so uh boxing so it makes sense then that it would be popular especially among some people. like me I'm I'm not physically unfit but I'm also not physically fit I'm normal man um So it makes sense that these sports is popular for people like me. Of course I don't really watch these sports, I don't really care that much. Um and also for me I don't like it. I wouldn't want to be in, involved in these sports because I don't want to dedicate to one game like that. Yeah, I play games for fun. Um so yeah, I wouldn't want to do these sports, but something you know, like if I made money off these videos, that I would like doing. as a career kind of thing. It's like that, yeah. To be a professional gamer in that regard, sure, I'd be interested in that because I enjoy games. But to focus on just one one game or one genre, I I I could that plus the games I most enjoy are like sandbox where it's like oh boy, you have to do speed runs like in Minecraft, speed run to the Nether. Oh, what well, speed run to the end? to kill me and drag. Okay. That's fine. Um no, I'm not interested in playing like that. So the one I'm just saying has it been enough time in the game Torch like there was an achievement to beat it in under 3 hours and I did it and I haven't been able to play it space. It so burned me out too. So I wouldn't even want to speed it. is my point. Um But I I do those who not only do speed runs but are good at them. They're good good on you. This and I definitely find it interesting those examples of speed runs where they find glitches, they find ways to shave off even fractions of a second cuz it that much can make a difference. That's not me. I play games for fun. I also and I play games for other reasons too. I don't remember if I talked about that one before. One reason that I have. I don't remember if I. How, well, how long it's been? Probably half a minute. But how one of these parts to this map talk about how the fact I'm unemployed. At least that this time. Hopefully, uh, maybe that will change by the time you see me. I doubt it, but maybe, maybe it will. Um, maybe. Anyway, um, one thing that is nice about it is a certain intrinsic fairness. That would be would be a bad example because I don't know why that happened, but. There is an intrinsic fairness in that there are rules that are strictly held in games, strictly respected in video games. So, as long as you obey the rules, which basically is very hard to break rules in a game, in a video game. As long as you do that and you do the the quests that give you, you succeed. I don't get the experience that I like. It's like I've done the right things. Like I got the degree. Yeah, I am respectful to people. I'm helpful. And things like that. I'm creative, but I can't. I can't get ahead. I can't get success. 
2018, it's like, reality sucks for me. It really does. But in video games, it, it's not like that. It's a, no, I, I've been given this task to do, I do it, and I'm rewarded. It's like, that, that's consistent. It'll always happen. If I succeed the task, I, I succeeded then. Whereas in life, I succeed the task, and I may not get the reward. It's like, that, that's a definite appeal to video games that I think that some don't get. Especially, like, those who would say that, you know, the unemployed, they're just, you know, people that hang out in their parents' basements playing video games. It's like, well, some of us, yeah. Well, I'm not in the basement, but it's... You know, and I also do make work out of the gameplay, like doing these videos. But it's... I mean, yeah, why wouldn't we? We can escape to the games where there is a fairness that we don't get to experience in life. You've gotten to experience it, maybe. You know, you've put in the work and you've gotten the reward. We put in the work, we don't. So, yes, of course we're gonna be drawn to something where we are rewarded for our effort. Oh, I forgot to rinse that off. That one. There. Um. Now, that doesn't explain esports necessarily, but there are some people that don't understand some of the appeal to video games, and that's one one of the reasons that it appeals for me, at least. At least I think that's part of the reason I enjoy video games. It definitely makes sense to me, though. See it being true for many, not just me. Not just. Then it's also funny. It's like I'll talk about you know the, the fairness, but then it's like you know I I hate a game like I hate Dark Souls game. You know that that type of that type of game where it's unnecessarily hard, where it is a you, you are going to be smashing your head against things to try to succeed. You know I hate that because it is. I play the games fun. I play it to succeed, and so when a game is basically designed where success is after you die a lot, get frustrated a lot, it's like, yeah, that kind of defeats the purpose, but I will still play those games. But then it, also, it can also really be worth, like, a Dark Devotion, that, that was a really fun game, I really enjoyed that game. Yes, it's Souls-like in some regards, but in others it is not, which is good, because it was in way it was not in ways that made it enjoyable. Huh. But I did see something was it Activision? I feel like it was something like a publisher was saying that they wanted to push for esports to come, like, push it forward in local communities. So I guess that means, you know, like, coming to your hometown. Um, but, you know, like, having a competition that is just for the hometown. Which would be kind of neat, I, I, I will say that. I, I do think that could be a neat thing to do. Um, I don't think that it should necessarily be put together by a large publisher. I think that should be put together by the community. But it makes sense to do something like that. I kind of like that idea. But not necessarily for the esports aspect. But as a way to bring the community together. Because it is something a lot of people could do. And depending on the game, a lot of people could have fun with it. I know Minecraft is one thing that a lot of people would would say, Oh yeah, that would be perfect. It's like, well, no, because Minecraft gets kind of boring. Oh. I mean, like, this could work. 
physically in detail. Um, satisfactory to a degree more because it, it doesn't get as boring as Minecraft does at times. So, like, to me, community gaming would be like, you know, getting grandma to play with people. I don't know many grandmas that would be interested in playing a Call of Duty game. I also will admit I wouldn't necessarily see many being all that interested in uh, Satisfactory. But there are other games they could have fun with. Um, crap, I'm not trying to remember the name, but it's a Demolver Digital game. It's not out yet. Well, anyway. No, it's not gonna be out by the time. Devolver Digital Public. To be specific, it's a party game. Oh, I can't remember it. It annoys me, because it does look like it'll be fun. Well, here, another game is Heave Ho. That's a party game. It's like that, yes, I could see plenty of grandmas enjoying games like that. And I think that that could be a, you know, a fun thing to try to put together. You know, a community gaming event where you get a whole bunch of people to come, from people that don't necessarily play games and play a game like that. Because, yeah, it may take them a level or two to figure out how to play it, but then they'd probably be laughing their heads off because they'd be having so much fun. Uh, Ultimate Chicken Horse, that's another example of a game that would probably translate well to community game. Just getting people together because it just, it's active, it's involved, it's somewhat simple in the concept and in, in what it is you need to do, so that makes it approachable and accessible for many. But, yeah, like, not call. Because it's also, I, so something I, I saw, not, I started seeing not too long ago, and they are pretty funny, is a girlfriend's, a girlfriend reviews channel on YouTube, where her boyfriend streams, and she would be there and like providing commentary as well. Um, but she offers reviews, and he he gets a little a little complicated. That's one thing, but anyway, um, basically basically reviews what it's like to live with someone who's uh, playing the game instead of how it is to play the game herself because she doesn't actually play the game. Uh, of what it is like to watch somebody play. I think it's that's pretty funny. I don't remember exactly what it was that got me to think about that. But I guess that idea that yeah, some people it, it's they they she does play some games and oh yeah, that's right, good Paul do. She talked about one of the games that for right now, for one of the point that was recent was a review of Halo Reach. And both for playing it and also watching somebody play it. But she talked about how one thing that was so nice about it compared to, for example, Call of Duty is that in Call of Duty, a multiplayer there, basically it's a game of who sees who first. That it is so much a once you see somebody, you shoot them, they will die because, or you're not good. And it's like a, a good player will always. Like headshot you very rapidly, whereas with a game like Halo, or well, Halo Reach, but any of the Halo games, I believe, it can actually be, you know, sort of a ballet between you and the other person trying to shoot each other until the first person dies. And that makes it a lot more fun. And it really does. I'm, I'm not just saying that because that was what uh, her conclusion was, but that that is true. It's like when you can just be killed because somebody spotted you from across the map, that's not so much fun. This is when you both come up against each other, and it's just, okay, who manages to dance around better to avoid getting shot while shooting you? So yeah, the one thing, though, that's a little complicated, and it's, I mean, I, it, when I start explaining, it's like, oh, okay, that makes sense. But some people think that it makes it non-genuine. It's like, no, it, it still works. It's still fine. 
uh, her boyfriend is a writer, so he writes scripts for for the video for her to you know, go through and say. But it's all based on what she says. It's like it's not him reviewing it; it is her reviewing. He just helps with with the word, which makes perfect sense. And it's like if he's a writer. And clearly showing that he is good at this kind of writing and having humorous, then yes, take advantage of it. It helps make it better. I don't understand why people would be like, oh, that means it's you know all fake. It's like, no, it's not fake. It's just he's helping her basically with, with expressing herself. There's nothing wrong with it. If anything, it's good he's doing that. They're in a relationship. Shouldn't they be helping each other? But it, it, it is funny those are funny, especially if you know the games, or if you know enough about them. It, it just... because of the way that uh, she calls out certain idiosyncrasies of certain games, because when you're playing the game, you don't necessarily recognize it. But if you're just watching it being played, you may notice it. I mean, it's also kind of like how when you watch somebody else play a game, and I definitely am guilty of seeing this, where it's like, okay, you don't, why don't you understand that what you need to do is you need to get everybody to stand in that spot right there, because it says it. All you have to do is look down at, like, the center bottom of the screen, and you will see it's saying that. How do you not see this for minutes, so many minutes? Yeah, okay, I'm guilty of being upset when seeing that happen. I don't, but I mean, I don't doubt that that happens for me too. It's just, hey, I got the ace tracker, so you know where I'm looking at least. So, so it's not just that, why aren't you seeing? It's a, you are legitimately not seeing the thing you obviously need to do. You are such a moron. Versus why you're not seeing the thing that you obviously need to do. You're such a moron. <laughs> it's a difference of degrees. Difference of degrees. Sorry, I just thought, you know what? I, I want to look to make sure that the accent is still there. Alright, and also, this is part six. Okay. It sounds right. I need to check that one. Um, no, this might be part five. I need to end on an even. I'm sorry, on an odd to make sure the time works. I have about a few minutes left. I might just make this one long, because I've only have one more part left in this, at most. I mean, I have like 20 minutes to half an hour, so I will either make this long, or, um... It depends on how many times, how much part I'm on, or uh, the next part will probably end up short. I kind of want to comment on with the GoFund review, situate the larger idea of just uh, playing with somebody who's not necessarily that much into games, not as much as you. That, if approached well, I think that's a wonderful thing. Because, you know, like some people worry today about how, about kids playing games. And a lot of it, unfortunately, is they well, the parents aren't properly involved with it. So, like the stories of uh, kids not wanting to stop playing Fortnite it, it is a current example. And you know, they throw tantrums if you try to get them to stop. It's like, okay, yes, this is a problem. But it's also one of those, there's a chance that if the parent was involved early on with setting the habits, setting what is acceptable, when playing the game, that you would have been able to prevent this. I'm not saying that to say that those parents that experienced it have done something wrong. I'm just saying that you can approach it, you should be able to approach it in a way to help mitigate that. Such as playing with them. Even if you're not that much into the game, playing with them, because you will be able to help buffer it. 
setting certain rules and guidelines where it's like the whole you only get to play after your homework is done. That would be one. Um, only playing before dinner would actually be another good thing. Um, so it's like you're not playing after dinner because that's, you know, you're going to be going to bed after that. So you're not staying up to keep playing. We're not going to allow that. Doing some things like that where you're setting how it works and you're not preventing them from playing. You're just trying to have a better control. And it helps, but also just playing with them. It, it helps to just play with them. I, I do not doubt. I don't have that experience myself. Not, not being a parent. Um, but it, 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 if you involve yourself in it, it will make it easier to manage any issue. And also, I do believe that there are games that, you know, they're not appropriate for a younger audience. But, you know, if you play with them, if, you know, it's your child and you decide, you know, I'm going to play with them, you can help buffer some of that. I'm going to stop. So, yeah, it's inappropriate, but you can help provide the context. You can also call out that it's inappropriate, like, you shouldn't be looking at that and, like, even reach over to cover their eyes and make it that itself a little bit of a game. Um, and, I mean, it's like you could. You, you approach it that way, you, it may help. I, I would expect it would help. Alright, um, I want to take care of this. And there's also, I think, two, one here. Isn't, wait, it's another. There. Oh. Alright, um. Okay, so yes, this is part six. I'm just counting to make sure. Yeah, okay, so I will do one more part then. Wait, is that right? Yes, because that's five. I don't have a folder yet for six. Okay. So yeah, so I will do one more part, and that will be the last part for this. Because that will take me to part seven, so I'll have a good, uh, good number for what I need. Okay. See you next time.